Friends Podcast. Here we are once again. It's July the 1st, and this is episode three of our Artist Friends Podcast. And I'm here with Diane and Constance. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt from Diane Hunt Studio. Uh, happy to hear, see everybody, hear everybody. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Constance Brosnan uh, with Constance Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. It's good to be here this evening with uh, Clyde and Diane. All right, welcome. And uh, I hope you guys got a chance to look at the videos. I'd see we had a uh, Stephen Bauman uh, video, and Stephen Bauman's always good for some uh, artists, uh, teaching artists how to advance their careers, uh, improve their craft, paint. Of course, he's a main uh, plain air guy, but uh, he still has a lot of tips. And I think the video that I uh, recommended that we watched was the one where he talks about uh, entering contest across the internet, especially a magazine, you know, contest and uh, how to prepare for that. And uh, what do you guys think about that? I enjoyed it. I think it. what he had to say, yeah, was true. I, I, I mean, I've been in a number of contests myself and um, you do learn to weed out the ones that don't really matter and look for more important ones because it does get expensive entering them. Yes, it can. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially, you know, 50, there are, you know, it may only be $12, $15, $25, $30, you know, but if you enter enough, it adds up. that sure can. However, one thing that I did discover, and you guys can, maybe we can, maybe we can compile a list. There are contests across the internet that are no cost. Now the uh, Bold Brush, <laughs> one that which he mentioned, they, if you're, even if you're not a member of the FASO organization, they have a free entry no cost entry every month. And if you gain recognition of that, I mean, like, like he stated, that's, uh, you know, your career can really launch because you get listed in their magazine. It's a nice option to kind of keep it on your list, on your calendar to uh, every month and uh, enter an image. And it's uh, real easy to sign up for that. In fact, that's one I, I participate in. Another thing, with regards to uh, low cost contest. And these are contests where you don't win any prizes. It's more, it's more of a uh, ego boosting is some of the, ver the various uh, groups on Facebook, they have what they call monthly challenges. And you can enter an image, you know, based on, you know, subject. like I'm in the uh, Puri watercolors uh, group and they have a monthly challenge every month. And there's several thousand members, but only maybe maybe a couple hundred, not even that, enter in their monthly challenge. And if you uh, win, you know, one of the you know settings, they usually have first through tenth place. It's bragging rights, but it will help you gain some more recognition because of course it's distributed across the internet, you know, and everything. So that's one way. Uh, I also I participated in the past. I haven't done that much, but uh, on the Fine Art America site, if you're a member of that site, individuals they have contests, all kinds of subject subject matters, and it's another case of just bragging rights. But it's wide distribution. As my you know last po our last week's podcast, you know I mentioned the ideal of on this internet recognition, marketing, attention, gaining attention. And these, these little things help you gain that attention throughout, you know, throughout the internet. It's another no, uh, no cost way. If you are on a budget like me, I don't have any money 
to enter all these different contests that have that require entry fee. These are ways that you can still utilize, you know, the uh, power of the internet and everything. That's why I want, when when I came across Stephen Bauman's video, and he's talking about that, you know, area knock cons. Uh, the, the another thing you notice on the, on the purpose of the video was motivation. What do you guys think about that when he's talking about it? He ended with the contest speech, but he was more talking about staying motivated to create art. I like that because it gives you the incentive to uh, create new pieces of work for each contest. You know, so you'll create something for the challenge of whatever, you know, because some of the contests that you enter have, have a, a theme challenge for the, for the uh, contest. Even if it doesn't, then you can maybe uh, create something fresh for the challenge, for the, for the challenge or just for the contest. It's a lot of times things will have, you know, as, and also uh, another thing that you can create a piece for is a lot of times uh, if you want to create something, a lot of times for art shows, they'll have you, they, they have contests for art shows too. You can always create something for an art show and just different kinds of things say that are themed. Just push yourself to create something for a, for a you know, a contest that keeps you busy. It's a good way to get out of that uh, motivation block. Yeah. Constance, if you listen to uh, last week's uh, podcast, Diane and I, we, the overall theme was, was staying true to yourself. This is a yeah. way of doing that. So instead of always trying to create art for the market, this is another way of you're creating art. You enter contests that appeal, appeal to you and that feature the style of work that you create. And there's zillions of them. There's the paid ones and there's also the, you know, the, the free ones. And it's just a matter of spending just a little bit of time to find them and then setting your, your, your mindset up, you know, getting yourself in the mind, in the thinking for, to, to enter that piece you know, in, in that contest. I, I mean, I don't know that I would do that though. I, I, what he was talking about, like trying to find a contest and then paint to paint for it. But I, I don't really have a problem with motivation, I guess, because I don't, but I guess it would help people that do. I mean, they have other, there's other things too, like the daily paint works. They have, um, you know, things going on all the time, like trying to do a painting every day for however long. Some people do it every day. You know, exactly. just as a, I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how they can do that. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. But I, I mean, some people don't complete the, you know, they, they'll make a painting. There are people who do paintings a day. But they're usually very small. But yeah. some people paint every day on the same painting and do a larger painting. But it's just, you know, getting into that habit of getting in the studio and you're brushing your hand and, and doing it. Mm -hmm. Get into a routine. Even though you don't feel like it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The thing I was thinking of that he mentioned, um, and I thought it was a very good statement. He says, as artists, we should not to sell. In other words, lower our standard and just paint stuff that we know are going, going to sell. Right. Well, is, is, yeah, we shouldn't dummy ourselves down for the market is what he put. That's the way he's, that yeah. way he put that's it. He says, yeah. never dummy yourself down for the market, he you know, the, which I have tried to do at times. And well, it's tempting I mean, you can always, you don't you, ever you, paint. You, you have your bills them. coming in. You need to pay them. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, you can always make prints and sell of your work and sell them at lower prices, but don't dummy your work down for the market. You know, uh, there's always a way to make something that costs less for you to sell by making prints or something, but to never, I would say, never, never try to paint something of lesser quality for the market. It's a perfect analogy. He says, he says, when you, when you uh, cook for other people or if you have a party or something, you, you know, a big elaborate uh, buffet and, you know, all nice prepared dishes, whatever. But so then when you're, when you're cooking for yourself, you don't feel like doing that. So you end up maybe, maybe ramen noodles, you know, is good enough. Yeah, that's what After it is. After a while, ramen noodles become all the time. He says, well, 
your art can do that because this, if you keep making ramen noodles, quality art, you'll never get back to doing the high quality work that you want, that you're wanting to do that give you the most pleasure. So how to sell art online and they're selling $5, $10, $15 work. And the work is not really quality work that they, that they could be doing. They're catering to the market. Yeah, we all have bills to pay. If you look at the history, the history of art, and you look back at all of the artists who are now what we call the icons, the famous you know, art, they all had alternate forms of revenue during their progress, during their careers, till their art achieved such a level to where they could live off of, of it independently. They had mm -hmm. all the incomes to pay their expenses, you know? That's what note cards are for. <laughs> That's what what? That's what note cards are for. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I heard somebody, I don't remember who it was the other day, but I thought with a really good mindset. Most people say they're artists, but they have a, a regular normal job, right? So really they're, they're doing art on the side. But somebody was saying, shoot, I can't remember who that was. They were saying you should flip it. You're really an artist doing a, your job on the side. It's exactly. just a different mindset of a way of thinking of it. Like, I thought that was really... About two years ago, when I, after I finished you know, the Paul Klein's course and was really motivated, and then, of course, we started holding our, our regular meetings. By the way, do you realize that this is our, our 74th meeting, meeting together? Like it doesn't even wow. the time has just gone by. Yeah, it may only be episode three for our podcast, so we've decided to start recording this. But as far as us meeting online, we've been meeting for seventy four times. You know, throughout the, the last two years, it's it's some time out for holidays or if, you know sickness, illness, or whatever. But for the most part, it's been seven you know seventy four straight meetings. I flipped that myself psychologically. I'm an artist full time. I just happen to work in retail. So I could pay my rent, keep the lights on, and buy art supplies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's an important way to think about it, though, because yeah. a lot of people don't think it that, think of it that way. And yeah. I think that's really. I didn't used to do this. Now, when people ask me, "What do you?" You know, like when I go get my hair cut, you know, they're always trying to you know hold a conversation with you. And they say, well, "What do you do?" I'm an artist. Oh, really? What do you do? You know, so I, and, I, and it leads into a conversation talking about my yeah you know, talking about my art. That's what I do, and I even had business cards made up with yeah you know, as as an artist. I'm I'm a working I'm a working artist. You know, I'm not making enough money to live off of it on its own, but I'm still I make a little bit of money. I sell something once in a while. Hey, unfortunately, especially the younger folks who may be listening to this podcast, when you get involved with some of the so-called uh, curators art professionals and collectors and artist representatives in the art world, as they say, they have a difference between a professional artist and an amateur artist. I read a definition online that someone has stated, which I think is perfect. If you have sold a work of art for money for what to a stranger or to a family member, you are a professional artist, period. If you have sold any of your work, even if it's only been one in five years, the with the online and with all these different platforms where you can have your art uh, purchased with on apparel, you can put it on apparel and postcards and prints and whatever. I haven't sold that many originals, but I've sold a heck of a lot of prints and a heck of a lot of clothing and apparel. And I mean, people have bought clocks with my art on, and they've bought pillows, and they've bought tapestries and and blankets and and even a women's dress you know <laughs> so i'm a professional well, I've, I've sold a lot of portraits yeah so in the past i mean i haven't sold a bunch lately i haven't sold any in a long time but i haven't tried to sell any in a long time so he is a younger yeah. young i was thinking about maybe trying to get back into portrait work but I have to knock a whole bunch of rust off of my skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, going to take some serious brushing up on my part. It's like Stephen Bauman said in one of his videos, your each piece of work, each work do is practice for the next one. You have to continue. You have to continue to create art to improve. For people who are listening to this podcast, who are artists, 
if you want to get in on a game, join us. Cool. We meet every week, right? Right, guys? You know, and yep. this is not a uh, – this is serious. You know, we, we have fun, but at the same time, it's all about gaining attention, you know, through the Internet. Yeah, that's the beauty of the Internet. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to join this union. You don't have to – be involved with this, you know, CNN or CBS or whatever, and you can become famous on the internet just through your own activity and your own work. Another thing that which I have been thinking about, especially now that we're all of us are getting older, I've been thinking about my legacy. You know, I do my art predominantly for my daughters so that they will have something when I depart this earth. You can create a photo book of your art, like a catalog of, of your artwork. If you participate in an exhibit or in a gallery, what's the one thing they want you to talk about your art or they do a little write-up of, you know, what, your motivation and your inspiration for creating that piece of art? Why not put that in a book form? You, may, you can make yeah, that. That's a good idea. You can make that available for sale if people want to buy it. But at the same time, order a, a handful of copies. If you go and you visit a gallery, you can leave that. That's a, a good marketing tool. But – it's also a good legacy tool to leave your uh, relatives because one of the biggest things when we pass away, I remember they did this piece. Where is it? They have to piece together why you created that particular work of art. Well, if you have, if you've published in a book form, your words are right there. That's already made for them. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. I have my, all my um, paintings on the, uh, uh, I guess it's like software on my computer where I have everything listed and cataloged, but I don't have descriptions and, you know, like talking about each individual painting in there. But I guess there's a, I have to look on that to see if there's a place to put that. I hadn't thought about that. But with the, well, with the blurb service, you use, they have a uh, free software that they, you use to create your book that's called BookRite. Mm -hmm. And it's real easy. Pop your images in and then you can just type in your text and you can create Create a nice photo book of your of your artwork. That's something. Oh, you... blurb service is that what? It's yeah, called? yeah, it's a B blurb dot com. Yeah, b l u r b dot com. That's what I use to uh, publish my uh, graphic novels with. It's not it's not prohibitive. I mean, the cost is fairly reasonable. So, anybody got anything anything else they want to want to bring up? I've been talking too much. <laughs> um, Stephen Bauman also talked about the scams that are going around, and I. I mean, we, we all know about most of them, I think, but um, any listeners out there might not be aware of some of the things. Yeah, um, he did. He was talking about the one where they send you a email saying they want to purchase one of your paintings, and but they're moving, or <laughs> and they want to pay you more than what they, right. you know, what your price is, and they'll have a shipper pick it up, and all these things, crazy things. Yeah, so make those strange, crazy there, arrange right? arrangements, and yeah. they want to pay you more by check, but they want to wait until they get moved, and they'll have a shipper pick it up, and but don't do it. There's lot, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of crazy schemes out there of people trying to rip off artists. Yeah, yeah what was the other never, one that other yeah. thing too? Also, the um, the other thing that you talked about was the people who like to call you up and say. We want to evaluate your artwork, but we want you to pay us to do it. Oh, the yeah, uh, galleries. Or the galleries, or, yeah. The yeah, galleries yeah. that send you emails saying, oh, we like your artwork. We want you to <laughs> ship us your portfolio and a copy of your portfolio along with a hundred and something dollars so we can evaluate your portfolio and you're not going to get anything back unless you want to send us a self-addressed self stamped envelope so we can send you back your portfolio. Maybe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's a definite scam. I got I got that one. And I got the other one that, that Diane was talking about, too. Yeah, I, I got yeah. that one, too. Oh, uh, yes. By the way, we like the, the painting that you have on your website that doesn't have a price on it. We'll be willing to pay you whatever you want for it. But we can't pay you through PayPal. We want to send you a check, and we'll be willing to pay you whatever you want for it. But... Um, my wife doesn't know about it, and I want to get. She really likes it, but she doesn't know. I want to sneak it, sneak it by her. But so I need to send you a, a, a cashier's check on the side so that she won't 
know that I'm doing this for her anniversary. And I like what Stephen Bauman's recommendation, because I use it all the time. He recommended either PayPal or some other bank. Right. And by what, no way, and not, don't send anything until you're sure everything's cleared. And Absolutely. right. For our listeners to sum up this podcast, don't dumb down the quality of your art just so you can sell it. <laughs> don't be afraid to enter contests. There are a lot of free contests to get uh, publicity. Get your art out there. Get your art to the out in the world. And you can do that through the internet at practically no cost. And number three, don't fall for any scams. You know? Oh, and there was a number four. What's and the th- number four was art fairs and art shows. Don't <laughs> don't go to the first art don't go to art shows or the, that are the first art shows. Don't go to art shows that, what else did you say about the art shows? Maybe they've only done one or two a year and that's all, you know. Or right. You participate in the art contests or art shows established, you know, they've yeah. been around for a while. You can right. see previous winners. You right. Know, you want to see that they are established because. I learned a lot from the month of May. You don't go <laughs> to the first art shows of art shows. How many of those did I go to? Two? How many people showed up? Nobody. <laughs> yeah, what was you going to say, Diane? Um, if you stick with the established kind of shows that have been doing them for years, you can go back usually and see um, what kind of art they've picked in the past, yeah. um, what kind of things they're looking for, and you'll see who the judges were. And, you know, so you can get a better idea of what kind of um, work they're looking for and if you'll fit into their, uh, into their um, thing. Exactly. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a representational artist, you don't want to send your images to abst- contemporary abstract show. You know, you're, you're just wasting yeah. your time, you know. So, yeah, do a little you're bit wasting of... wasting your money. <laughs> yeah, well, and money. Yeah. Just do, just do a little bit of uh, research. And now we're going to have the tip of the week, and Constance is going to provide our tip of the week. You're you're on yeah. on the, on the uh, platform, Constance. I think that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the tip. Make sure that you go check out the kind of shows that you're going to go to to learn your lessons, so that you don't go to shows that are not experienced shows. Because I did learn valuable lessons in May. Okay. <laughs> that you go to. Don't go to the first shows that you (laughs) first shows that are first shows. If you're going to go to shows, make sure you check out the shows that you're going to go to and make sure they're not the first shows of there. Most of the time they're going to just bomb out. (laughs) All right. All right. Thanks. All right. Talking talking from experience folks. She's, uh, she's had some, uh, (laughs) Some definite experience with that. And she's uh, all right. Let's wrap this episode up. And this was for July the first, episode three of the Artist Friends podcast. And thank you, Diane and Constance, for joining me. Thank you, folks, for listening. And bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Constance, you got to say something. <laughs> bye. This is audio. It's not visual. <laughs> oh, that's right. Wait, wait, Sorry. He's leaving, but no, it's you got <laughs> audio. That it's audio. That's right. <laughs> See you All next right. week. <laughs> bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. All right, bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constant Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brownsand at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com That's CJ Kale at sign mystery-otr.com 
This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening. Thank you.